So here's a question that I know a lot of people are going to want me to ask you. Since you talked about tuning the, your bass drum with the 20 and the way that you were doing it super open, which is so awesome. But then there are certain gigs where you kind of you kind of got to be like, all right, I got to I got to dial it in. Yeah. Cuz with with Steely Dan, you you muffle it up a little bit, right? Oh, I, uh, as much as possible. I mean, it's I mean, pretty it's, dead. It's extreme, yeah. 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 When you when you got the Steely Dan gig, do you show up playing an open 20 and they were like, or did you make that decision yourself? No, I think was I, there a I fight just, with an engineer? <laughs> I knew going in that wasn't going to work. I mean, because you listen to the records, it's just not, it's not about that. Yeah. So I had to think 70s tight and, you know, put as much padding in the bass drum as possible. Yeah. Um, so you, show, you showed up knowing that already. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that. Um, plus, I had worked with them in the studio some, and I, I realized what they, what they liked even before that, you know, a little bit. Because um, my first experience with them was in the studio before they asked me to tour. Um, but yeah, I, I think the open kick drum thing started with some of the instrumental music that I was doing. I realized, and especially in clubs where, where you're not mic'd, it works great. Yeah. Because it just, it just, you can feel it and it fills out the room and there's all this air moving and it's, it's awesome, you know, just like playing at the 55 bar in New York where I played every Thursday for, for years, you know, um, that became the sound that I would use because there are no mics. You don't have to right. worry about, you know, someone knowing how to deal with it and make it work, you know. Um, so that's where it came from. It was more of a raw, just in a small club where you're not mic'd at all, you know, or very minimal, you know. So then you trying to apply it to recording, you know, that became another thing, you know. So did you start doing that in those years after school or once you got to New York or when did you start experimenting with that that open tuning? It was well it was really during school and then more so in that period that I was talking about between school and moving but um, but in school you know I was I was learning how to play bebop trying to you know get get way more into that so I was that was part of my lessons with Soph, I remember was just learning how to play on an open bass drum right. that was tuned like that bebop tuning yeah you know because you can't you know, you got to come off the head and that whole thing, the technique part. So when you were so. doing that, were you using an ambassador um, or an emperor? I think it was, a, yeah, a clear emperor. Clear? Yeah. A to clear get, emperor. To get more of that metallic sound, you know. It wasn't, it was, I was going for more of that, that kind of metallic thing. And nothing versus, in it. Versus a, a coated, uh, nothing at all. And no. so front head? Tuned a little higher than the batter head? You know, I'm not good at that. I just kind of find this, the spot where it sounds and feels right. I think they're kind of close together, but and then, I had to guess. But Yeah. And then no hole in the front. And then once you started miking it, would you mic it from the front or from the batter head? Well, we would do both. But I realized that the batter side, where the, where the pedal's hitting, is better because yeah. it's a little more controllable for the yeah. engineer. And that's... And when you're getting I, more of the attack, you know. Yeah, so when I play an 18 with no hole in the front, I mic it from from the batter. Yeah. So here's a big question. Have you, because I get these questions in my, in my forum, you know, guys talking about, man, I had to fight with this engineer. Were there ever any times where, like, you had to, you show up and you, you're tuned like that, you know it sounds great, and the engineer's like, Oh, well, I just, you know, did you yeah, ever have any fights? All the time. I, you know, I try to be as diplomatic as possible. It would happen a lot because they're like, is, do, do you need some dampening or, or is, you know, do, have you tuned that yet? Or what, whatever comment they're going to make. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you that's the that sound of the band. Just give it a, you know. And by the end of the, the gig, they're like, man, that was great. They figured it out. And they, they were like a fan of it, you know. Yeah. I thought when those things would happen, it was great because I was like, see, you know, just give it a shot. Don't be like, you know, it has to be this way, you know, right. like because even engineers do that, you know. Right. Well, when I did my Hudson DVD, they had just done yours and the engineer was like, man, have you heard the way Keith tunes his, his bass drum? It's totally open. It's totally different. And, it, and, it's, and of course, I had heard it. 
But yeah. that engineer, he was super into it. And and I don't think he was into it at first. Probably not. But no. he was like, man, but it's super cool. And yeah. I was like, well, yeah. I was like, well, I'm not going to do that because that's Keith's thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's get my bass drum to sound good right now. But, yeah, but so I would win him over. And then other times it was just, if there was not enough time for a real sound check or it just was a rush situation, I would just deal. And I, I would be, I would just kind of... You know, if I had to put a little bit of muffling on something, I would. So you would. The front header. You know, just, just to make it work. Um, but, yeah. I mean, not that I wanted to do that, but in the situation, it was just the easier thing to do. Because if it was just ringing, you know, it's not... It's, it's just, not good for anybody. It covers a lot of frequency, and it works... I found that it worked great with trios and things where there was more space. Um, but it's going to... It's going to cover a lot of that low end frequency and, and just finding the sweet spot where there's not so much of a tone and right. it's more of a just a thuddy kind of I just find it by my ear. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I just kind of tweak yeah. and I find it. You know, I mean, and some people have heard it, but for those of you who haven't heard it, I mean, what's so great about it is that it's a mix between, you know, Elvin is tuning high with an 18. Bonham is tuning his giant 26 open. Right. But what you were doing is taking a 20 and tuning it a little lower, not high, and, and open. And it's yeah. just like, when I heard it, I was like, yeah. Why doesn't everybody do that? I, I would imagine, like, I mean, I know you've done a lot of the open tuning, too, and, and just being from New Orleans. I mean, the, the whole second line street beat thing it's coming from that so yeah so you know for me it was just listening to that music and trying to figure out how to make it kind of work with the bebop thing and then the street beat thing and you know something in the middle of, of all that you know yeah um but it's 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 so much fun how it changes having more air beneath where it's not just a thud when you have something moving down there you know it changes the way you play, changes the space between the notes. At least that's how I, does, are you like that? Yeah, like it, totally. It that's just, why, you know, right now here in the studio, I've got this 26 set up, a 26 with no hole in the front. And it's just, I mean, it's all this air. Yeah. It's like, oh, I mean, you just go, whoo. And it's like, whoo. It's a statement. <laughs> Every note is a statement. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, it, it just, totally it changes just inspires. the way different things yeah you know? it changes the molecules in the air <laughs> <laughs> So here's a question I have for you. We were rehearsing yesterday, and I've noticed this on some some of the videos I've seen of you playing, and I and I double checked it yesterday. And so you were playing "Reeling in the Years," which is a triplet shuffle, and your left foot, your left heel, is tapping eighth notes, straight eighth notes. Are you aware of that? Like, is that something that you started doing unconsciously and then you're like, wait a minute, this is happening? Like, do you know that that's happening? At the time, I don't know what's happening, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it just happened. And I, it naturally just happened. Yeah. I'm sure there's other guys that, do you do that? Do you ever do that? Oh, I totally tap my left my left heel all the time, but not in eighth notes. Yeah, when playing you're playing triplets. triplets. <laughs> That's so, it's weird, man. But it's, I, I don't think about it at all. Yeah. And I use that all the time now. Like yeah. it, it became a thing where I'll play those eighth notes sometimes just as a little effect, you know, because it accidentally, well, I don't know if it's accident anymore. My foot just tends to want to do that. I can think, okay, don't bounce my foot. But if I'm not purposely telling myself to not let that happen, I don't really realize it's happening. Unless I look down, I'm like, you know, it's weird. It's like it, it must just be. Uh, it must be how I feel the time. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I, I have to be sitting higher actually. But it's just a bounce, I guess, you know, because I'm going. I'm think I'm thinking I'm playing just quarter notes, you know. It's, right. It's, yeah. It's, 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 but it's just bouncing, and it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's no something that I've worked it. on, that you know, Johnny Johnny Vodakovich started showing me. He's like, you know, you bounce your heel, you know, if you're playing jazz time, right? Quarter notes. So one, two, ding, 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 right? Or if you're playing funk, one and two and right. So I'm always doing this, right? Yeah. So step, go, go, get, psst, get, you so see, you always got that, that Bernard Purdy, but that's, yeah. But then if it's jazz, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and then you're just lifting, to get the the hi hat to open and close. Right, right. Yeah, I'm aware of it now because because some things have happened when I play and I use that straight eighths against triplets in certain like solo things that I do or whatever. It's just a cool little effect, but it came from just a, it just kind of happened on its own. I didn't, I wasn't like, okay, I'm gonna figure out how to play whatever it is, two over three. You know, it just kind of happened. You know? Yeah. 